All right. Well, as promised uh, for this Mother's Day special, uh, my special guest today is my own mom. Um, after I asked her to do it, I did have some second thoughts because I started getting emotional just thinking about it and having her on. So um, I apologize right now if there's uh, some emotions along the way, but I thought it'd be great to, to have her on because she has an amazing story. She's been an amazing mom. And so I just wanted to have her on for this Mother's Day special to talk about her story. So thanks for uh, coming on. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, so because it is Mother's Day and because we're going to be talking about your story, but most importantly, you being as a mom, my mom, for those that don't know, she had the privilege of raising not one, not two, not even three, but five sons yes uh she got to raise five boys no girls so we didn't have any uh negative impact that way on our on our, on our family system um, but she got to raise five boys so i thought it would be good just to start out kind of light and have her tell us about what it was like to raise five boys all right you're up <laughs> okay um five boys um most of their life they we lived on the farm on a dairy farm and so they had the wide open spaces to ride their bikes ride the horses and um uh <laughs> there were two out of the five that didn't particularly like the farm and um uh, that was the youngest and the third oldest i don't know whether i can say your names or you can say their names. I, I, okay. I've All already right. said I didn't want to be on the farm. I already, <laughs> that's what drove me to do what I'm doing. Exactly. Oh. And Kent, the youngest one, um, he didn't care for it either. He did get on the horse a couple of times with Travis, but got bucked off. So that was the end of that. And, um, but so we had, um, but they all were into sports. And I worked nights at the hospital. And so some, some days I was driving back and forth like two and three times um, a day to get them to their activities. Um, they liked baseball, they liked basketball, football. Jeff was a hockey player, he loved hockey. And so getting them to and from their uh, activities was sometimes quite difficult. And sometimes their dad and I had to split up and he would go with a couple and I would go with a couple to, to uh, watch them play. So in that way, it was kind of a hard, um, hard time to um, get them to their activity. Um, I remember, um, like I worked nights and that's 11 to seven. And I remember one time when they were trying to find um, people, parents to um, give a ride to the kids because we had to, we didn't have a bus for the kids. So we had, the parents had to, to take them. And I remember one time um, when your teacher, Ryan, called and said, would it be okay if you took the kids today and I said, yeah, I can do that. And he said, because Ryan told me that you don't do anything. So that would be okay for you to, to haul the kids today. <laughs> Cause I was always up by the time they got home from school and then I wouldn't go to work until, so I guess he thought I didn't do anything. Anyways, I took the kids. <laughs> um, I was just say so all in all though like um I know you got some other things but like I, I guess did you ever um was it ever sad for you to not have a girl yes I I did want a girl and um but after you know after Kent was born and we knew that that was going to be the end of our fam that that was the our family I I mean I was okay now I wish I did have a girl because I can see, you know, the other moms of, of my daughter-in-laws that have a, a daughter and 
you don't have that same kind of connection or whatever. Right. I don't have, yeah. Like Christy lives next door to her mom and she's over there all the time. And not that I expect her to be here all the time. That's her mom. And so now I wish more than ever, but there was a period of time that I, it was okay because I knew a family in Hillspring that we knew and they had all girls and trust me, I was happy to have my boys and not her girls. So, yeah. Hormones. <laughs> you didn't have all those hormones running around. Oh, yeah. So I, I think of Travis and all those girls that he's got and I just, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we've been a disappointment to you as we've gotten older. That's what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have not been a disappointment. I think of all the times that I, that I flew down to Las Vegas to have my therapy. Right. Well, that's what I am, the Vegas therapy. <laughs> exactly. And that was a blessing. So, um, so some- yeah, I, I, loved, I loved going to watch you guys play any sport that there was. And even as you grew older and you were married, I remember... Uh, when all five of you played on the same softball team. And that was, that was so much fun for me to go and watch you play with each other. And it was, it was so, it was great. Then of course you moved away. Yeah. I was probably the most successful athlete though, right? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. We'll see what Ken says. Trophies don't lie. Trophies don't lie. Yeah. Yeah. You were all good players, softball players, every one of you. And I mean, you still play. Except Jeff, I don't think he plays anymore. All right. So speaking of sports then, so something that I know my listeners know that I enjoy is I enjoy to run. I enjoy yeah getting out and you know i used to do a lot more of it but obviously that passion for it came from the mom um she was a owner of running so what got you into running and what's kind of been that what was that like for you what's been that? well i got into running there were there were four girls two of them didn't work at the hospital but two of them did and so we kind of just started to run a little bit and first of all we just kind of ran around the temple that's a a block and so we would run and run and run around that for you know till we could get till we thought that we could go out on a run so then we started running those small little runs in lethbridge like the santa claus run the um i don't know there was, there was quite a few little runs that were 5K. And so then we thought, oh, I think we could do a 10K. So then we hunted for 10Ks and we did that. And then our first ran, run, uh, we did a half marathon and it was the uh, Melissa in Banff. And that was our first and we all four ran it. Two of them ran the 10K and two of us ran the half and that was me and another girl. And that was really, that was the start of my running. I was totally hooked after we ran the Melissa. And so then um, it was kind of, I, I loved it. I could hardly wait to get off work so that I could go run. And um, actually three, those three girls kind of stopped running. And so I ran by myself and I didn't care. I still ran a lot and I would have your dad take me out and I would run back in. And, uh, and then I got started running with um, Bonnie Smith mm-hmm. and we would take a car out and then run back in and then um, we'd go get the car. And we, I ran with her for quite a while. And then we decided one day that we would train to run the St. George Marathon. And that was the first marathon that I had 
the full marathon. And we trained for five months and ran the St. George Marathon. And I was 54 when I ran that and she was 50. So we were pretty happy and pretty proud of that. And I just kept running um, after that. I, I ran it the next year by myself because she didn't want to run it. And I, yeah. And yeah. then I started running some uh, half marathons with you and Sonia. And that was just the enjoyment of my life. I just, and sometimes um, when I was just running, I, I didn't even have music. That was my therapy for um, just thinking of what I wanted to do. It was my time to just be by myself and think about how I could help my boys. And many thoughts came to me when I was running and that's yes. that's Here. the sad yeah. yeah that's the saddest part of me right now is that I can't I love to go with Craig just to take Justin out to run and he's running from where we used to run from like 22 or 23 miles. And it makes me so sad. I said, even if I was five miles behind you, Justin, I wish I could. Yeah. Well, now people don't know why you can't, but we're going to get to that. Yes. <laughs> um, not for lack of desire. It's not for lack of... Right. There, there's other, other things, but... Just to finish up on the running thing, I mean, definitely it's, it, I mean, I use it for the same thing. It's nice to have just to kind of clear your head and have time to think and just kind of sort through maybe, yeah. you know, different things that you're going through or things that you could do differently in your life. And it right. just you know, space to do that, to kind of just be out and on your own. And actually I used to run with people and I started hating it. I don't really like to run with other people. <laughs> I like to run with by they, myself. I want to talk the whole time and I just want to kind of just have my own space and yeah. have my own pace and do that. That was I one of the things that Bonnie and I decided right from the beginning because she didn't like to talk while she was running and neither did I. So we kind of got that right from the start. Okay, let's just unless it's necessary, <laughs> don't talk. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. And I remember we were there for your first marathon and it was an yeah. experience to have you see you cross the finish line. And I didn't realize you were 54. You were old. So <laughs> I know. I'm worried about know. another one. I was like, well, I guess if you're 54 and you did your first one, I guess I shouldn't feel bad about trying to do another one. <laughs> yeah. I was 54 when I ran that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess maybe, maybe I'll still run one at some point. So you've still got 10 more years to run. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Thank you for that. Um, so now part of the reason, I mean, obviously not just because I'm doing a Mother's Day thing, but part of the reason, like I said before, I wanted to bring you on is just because you are an amazing person and you've dealt with a lot of different things and, and, and I think are a, a role model to a lot of people as far as how you've dealt with some of the challenges in your life. So when, I don't remember what was the, because I'm terrible with time. When did you first get diagnosed with cancer? What year was it? That was in two, uh, 2016. Okay. So you want um, to start there to kind of talk about that, like what that experience was like? Well, I was just so, um, it was just my regular checkup, my mammogram, and they, they found a lump. And um, so then they, they didn't say anything that day, but told me to come back the next day for an ultrasound. So I went back the next day and um, the doctor came in and I thought, hmm, this isn't normal. So I think I might be in trouble. And he said, the radiologist said, um, the lump hasn't moved. And so that makes us think that it is cancer. 
And so um, we'll need to take that out. Um, I was just so, I just couldn't believe it. I had been healthy my whole life and I had always exercised and just, and tried to eat, you know, like healthy. And I just, I couldn't believe it. And so I had to make an appointment. Well, they made an appointment for me to uh, have a biopsy done. And it was it, breast cancer. And I just, I was so angry at first. I just couldn't believe it. And I just couldn't, I could not get over that anger for a long time. And the why, just why, why, why. And yeah, it was devastating. Well, and I think just to give some backdrop too, I mean, obviously, you know, not to get too far into it, but just to kind of give a glance. I mean, you know, I think life has had, you've had quite a few challenges in life and, and you were kind of in a place where, you know, you just got remarried and were living life. And I was just so happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that was my, that was my question really. Right to God, why now? Like, I'm happy, we're happy, it's just the best time of my life, and you throw this at me, I, I just, it's hard to get over the why, why, why. But finally, um, I remember Craig just saying to me, you can't keep asking why. Mm -hmm. You have it we'll deal with it but you can't you can't ask heavenly father why because then that shows him that you don't trust him that you don't yeah and so but it was hard to get over the why yeah 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 i remember you being angry for a while <laughs> yes well, that's yeah. when i needed my therapist yeah okay so well, then how long did i mean so that was a so then I started um, chemo, yeah. and I did chemo for um, se seven months, and then I did radiation after that okay. for another month. And I recovered from that. I, I flew through that. We walked our 10,000 steps, walk, run, um, every day after that, except Sundays. And even when I came home from my treatments, I felt good enough and we would go get our 10,000 steps. So I flew through that. So I thought, okay, well, that's a tender mercy. And yeah, so, and I went back to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So, that January and of, so, so that would have been January 2017 right. that I went back to work. So this cancer thing, easy peasy, got it, whatever. Yeah, I think, and I thought never have to worry about that again. Right, right. So then. So then take us to, I mean, so well, I mean, what I guess what maybe first of all before I move in before I move on to it. So what was your biggest takeaway then from? going through that the first time just well i was grateful to have somebody that was by my side that helped me in any way that he could and that was craig and i i really don't know what i would have done i without him i didn't like i wasn't sick i wasn't throwing up like some people do when they have chemo so i was grateful for that and I mean, like when I had the radiation, I went to the gym, like we were going to a gym in Lethbridge. And after I finished my radiation, I would go to the gym. That's how well I was like going through that chemo and radiation. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So take us now to part two. <laughs> okay. So part two came in. Uh, December of 19. Yeah. 20? No. 18. Oh, 18. 18, yeah, because it went in. Yeah. 
Yeah, December of 18. So December of 18. And it was close to Christmas. And all of the kids were going to the, the daughters. Right. Their in -laws. It was the yeah, in -laws. the in-laws. Yeah. Um, and so we decided, Craig said, well, let's not just stay here. Let's go to Kalispell and we can just hang out, watch movies, watch basketball, and eat. So that's what we planned on doing. Well, the, just before I took vacation, I was at work, and all of a sudden I got these horrendous headaches. And so I was at work, I still kept working, and I just thought, oh, well, everybody's complaining about the flu. And that's how it started, is mm -hmm. headaches. But mine were so bad. And I'd have Ron to take my blood pressure because I thought, well, maybe it's, maybe my blood pressure is high. And so I'd have her take it standing and I'd have her take it sitting. And it was the same. So I knew it wasn't that. So... I came home and I took the rest of the weekend off because I was, I was dying with these headaches. And that was Christmas. So we decided we'd go anyway and they'd probably go away. So we went to Kalispell. They didn't. They got worse. And so we came home on the 27th. Yeah, it was around then. Yeah. yeah. And I went to the clinic and saw Dr. Clark and he immediately sent me for a CT of the head and he gave me the worst news that I could ever even imagine. And it was that it had mets to my brain. And that was, if you think I ask why before, I just, I, I just couldn't believe it that it had come back and that's to my brain. So I don't know it. I just couldn't believe it. And I was, so I started with, I started with radiation this time and they do 10 treatments and that's all they can do if you have brain cancer and because it you know it kind of ruins the rest of your brain yeah. if you take more radiation than that and it did even with 10 treatments so i did 10 treatments of radiation and then i had to wait a couple of weeks and then i started chemo in january i mean in the first of february and i did and then that's when I started the chemo. And so I was asking her, how many treatments do I, am I gonna have? Because I knew that I was having six treatments when I had the breast cancer. And she said, oh, you'll be having that the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just to start it off was, and my, the, doctor of radiation she was the one that gave us the great news about you know the radiation and the brain and where the tumors were and so craig said well let's address the elephant in the room and she said what's that and he said well are you giving us a timeline and she said yes from six months to 18 months but probably cut that in half and it'll probably be a year. She'll have a year. But today is the 17th month. Yes, yes. So not saying that it was a... A misdiagnosis or mis... Whatever. No, and I don't think it was. Um, but to say I sailed through it like I did the other one is... No, no, this one has kicked me in the butt. And um, the first six months were horrible, were terrible. And I had made up my mind I was going to go to Brad's wedding. 
And, but I, on the way home, I didn't know whether I was going to make it home alive. I was, I was terrible that weekend. I felt I was just, yeah. Yeah. And, and Joe said too, I, I didn't know if you were going to get home either, but yeah, I think I we, did well, for us. We hadn't seen you. Like, yeah. Face, you know, until that, cause another challenge that we were going through it. Yes. Immigration stuff. So we couldn't even cross the border at that time. So we couldn't go visit or anything. So yeah. it was waiting for that time for you to come to Brad's wedding. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely much of a, you know, kind of a, like a shock to kind of see you. At yeah. That and kind of probably. Had I couldn't time. hardly walk. I couldn't. Yeah. yeah. It was, so, it was terrible. How long that would be. But, and I think that that's what, I want people to take out of this too, is just to be able to recognize that the, a lot of this is about resilience and just the ability to kind of keep fighting despite what, you know, yeah. people I think have been feeling like punched in the gut, punched in the face these days by just everything that's going on. But this yeah. is kind of a drop in the bucket and to kind of have that resilience that you've hit, that you've shown. And like I said, just, you know, being maybe given like you know whether it's six to 12 months or whatever it is to live and here it is 17 months 17 and months. you're still fighting you're still going through it so what do you think for you what do you think drives you what what gives you that i really i i i don't want to not see my kids and i and i want to see my grandkids I was so, I was so grateful that I was able to go down to see Jackson and to, I was just so grateful. And you know, when I hugged him goodbye, I thought, I wonder if this is the last time that I get to hug him. And I know that Ken said, oh, because we hugged for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I know that Ken said, oh, I can tell who the favorite is. And I said, well, I don't know if I get to hug him again in this life. And I just, I was just so grateful for that, that I was able to, he's got such a strong testimony and I was so grateful for that. But you know, we've had, We've had many miracles and mer many um, tender mercies. I mean, about probably. Well, can eight I just months? really something really quick, just because a lot of people may not understand. Okay. My son is serving an LDS mission, so he's gone for two years. That's why there's not there wasn't that uncertainty of like whether you'd see him again or what you know what. Oh, the would yeah. Be. Don't necessarily understand. The and thing. you so, know, like, but it was about eight months. And I had my scans all done again. Mm -hmm. And the doctor was so, he goes, there's nothing. We can't see any of the tumors in your brain. We can see kind of a shadow of where they were, but they're not there. And so, I mean, we felt like that was truly a miracle. Yeah. And truly a tender mercy. Right. So I think that when you're going through things like this, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're our religion or you have a religion and believe in God. He, I mean, he is there. And, but I, I'm telling you, I don't know what I would have done without Craig. He was beside me every step of the way. And he never, I keep telling him you know, I'm sure you didn't sign up for this. And he always tells me, well, how do you know that yeah. I didn't? And so we have seen, we have seen miracles and many um, tender mercies. And because, because I have two sons that live far away, but it didn't keep them from keeping in touch. Like you phone me every night on your way home from work. Travis phones me every night. Justin would stop in every day to see how I was. And so Kent would occasionally. <laughs> um, 
But he's got a lot more on his plate than I guess. I don't know. Well, I think the one thing is too is again just trying to. I mean, I appreciate you giving credit to those things, and I think that those all play a part. But I think the thing that you undersell is just your own sense of like perseverance. I mean, you like because a lot of people would give up. A lot of people would well the first six months. I wanted to, but wow. I had one goal in mind mm -hmm. for that, and that was to see Brad married. Yeah. And so I think that you just pick something and you say, I'm going to do that. To do that. I'm going to work towards that. I'm going to, and now, like I've started, Craig took me out the other day when it was really nice, mm -hmm. and we walked up the block. and. If people knew that for me to just walk up the block was a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and when I had been running all of those miles and then to think that I just walked up the block was a big thing. Yeah. So I think that you, you just have to force yourself to do it. And Craig's always right there saying, no, you can do that. We'll walk up the block or we'll come down and we'll walk on the treadmill. And the other night, I, that's what I did. I walked on the treadmill for 10 minutes. And I, just, I thought, holy cow, I've walked for 10, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's, like I said, I mean, I think definitely having that, like you said, the, uh, having something to look forward to, having a goal in mind, and even if it's just, you know, a goal, and then you get that goal, and you have to set another goal. But yeah. Yeah, now it's to get my flowers planted. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if it doesn't snow this weekend, you might. Yeah. Think. Well, <laughs> I never did plant uh, my garden until after the May long weekend. So, and I still sometimes got snow. So yeah yeah all right so so basically again for me i guess you know why i wanted you to come on is just to kind of tell your story because i think it's, it's amazing what you've been able to do and the strength and endurance that you've had i just wrote something down that i hope i won't you know get too emotional with but i think this is kind of my summary and i just kind of will kind of close out okay. with it but um i just for me this is who my mom is, is my mom is a, is a strong, caring, extremely resilient person. Someone is, who's been able to do, endure more challenges slash crap than most people I know, starting with five boys, a difficult marriage that, that ended and now in a good marriage, so that's positive. A son being shot, I probably have to mention that. <laughs> um, now cancer twice. Uh, pushed herself through to run several marathons and countless other challenges. So for me, um, you are amazing and uh, shame or any kind of self-doubt has no place in your life. I hope you feel who you really are, a wonderful, caring person who's done so much and who's such an example to, to many, inc including myself. Um, and uh, I just want you to know that and to, to feel that sense of honor, especially on this Mother's Day weekend of, of everything that you've done and your example. And like I said, just your sense of perseverance through so many challenges and given like uh, a roadmap for, for us to, to persevere despite whatever comes. So I love you for that. And uh, glad you took the time to come on and to share your story. And and I hope everybody gets a sense of just the amazing person that you are, <laughs> not only to me, but you know, I know countless other people. So thank you again for coming on. Thank you, I love you. Love you too. <laughs>